Welcome to Next Radio with Broadcast Bionics, innovative solutions for creative people. Well done to, um, to, to Matt and James for a great event. I, I don't know whether it's an accident of scheduling, but um, we had prison radio and then we had Paul frightening the life out of me in terms of, you know, if you ignore what he says, that's where you're going. So anyway, this is nothing to do with legal or judicial. This is... Uh, uh, this is audio, and so it's, um, it's potentially one of the few talks today that isn't, isn't a direct radio talk. However, as you will see, uh, all, is, all, is, uh, all is not necessarily true as far as that's concerned. So I'm going to tell you how we, uh, how we took Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, the well-known actor, and stuck him into space. If you've stuck, stuck into this auditorium because you're uh, a big fan of Sherlock on the BBC or a big fan of Benedict and you thought we really have put him into space, uh, disclaimer, we haven't done that, so don't be disappointed. Um, but I will show you how we worked with him to really create something, I think, fairly unusual. Um, this is us, this is the, the Motley Crue, there's a few of them around here um, today. And some of you here may know us as a, 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 as a radio India, as a radio production company, and, and certainly we do do a lot of radio. Uh, however, um, as much as we do radio, we also do interactive content, and, and, and that's as big a part of our business as it is the radio side. And what I'm going to talk to you today is really how we've taken those two planks of the business and merged them together into the creative idea I'm going to talk through with you. So really this is a story about two things. First of all, how we put Benedict into space, but also how we took radio skills and used them within the games environment. And, and, and hopefully it will give you a bit of inspiration for how you can do the same. So if you don't know him, uh, this is Benedict Cumberbatch, definitely one of the sort of rising stars uh, of the UK acting scene. He's just going over to Hollywood. He's been at the National recently in um, Frankenstein. And uh, as I say, he's the, he's the star of Sherlock. Uh, we'll get on to him in a minute. Uh, first of all, um, what I'm going to talk to you about is the use of binaural audio, and uh, you, heard, um, you heard it uh, mentioned briefly earlier today. Uh, if you think about mono and stereo, and then you think about 360 degree sound, binaural is the next stage on from that, which is basically it's not just 360, it's up and down. And uh, within a game environment, it means you can move to and from sound and have an authentic experience. And, Binaural audio is recorded in its truest sense. It's recorded the way the human ear hears it. You can actually buy a microphone that is shaped in the shape of a human head, and it has two floppy ears on the side, and it literally records audio the way uh, the way we the way we hear it. So that's what binaural is. And we uh, started looking into this and started thinking, well, maybe there's something we can do in the game space with this. And when we really started delving into it, we found that there wasn't an engine, a, a game engine that you can plug. Uh, audio into that can help you create this, this, this sort of space. And obviously everybody here knows the power of audio, knows how strong it can be. Um, you know, Francesca was talking uh, earlier in terms of, you know, when you're listening to podcasts and things on your headphones. It's a really strong, immersive experience. But that engine didn't exist. So um, being uh, an indie, uh, we just said, well, we'll go, we'll go ahead and make it ourselves. So we did. And it took a, it, it, it took a long time, but we got there. And the first iteration of it was this game. This was called Papa Sangre. Um, not for my own vanity, just for the sake of sort of knowing uh, if I'm preaching to the perverted or not. Anyone in the room downloaded Papa Sangre? Well done, sir. You earned me £3.99. That's very good. Uh, okay. Um, so for those of you who don't know, this is a game. It came out um, at the start of this year. And it was funded by ourselves and 4IP, which was the investment arm of Channel 4, um, that was particularly directed at doing... Uh, investments that had a social purpose but which also were progressive in their own way. And we went to them with the idea of doing an audio only adventure game. And the idea around Papa Sangre is just like any adventure game, uh, you, are, you have a number of missions to achieve um, and once you've achieved all those missions the game is over. And Papa Sangre is an evil Mexican emperor and he's stolen your soul. And the idea around the game is you're in a castle and you're, you're in his castle and you're going through a series of rooms and you have to find your soul again. But everything is audio only. So what does that really mean? How does that, uh, how does that iterate itself? Oh, we should have some... That needs to go up a little bit louder, maybe. I was controlling the audio. Let's fire that off again, and maybe we can hear that. No? James or Matt or someone? <laughs> we can't hear the audio. We've got a problem with this presentation. Um, can hear footsteps running around. Okay, well I'll 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 push on. 
Um, and maybe we'll, we'll jump back to that. I can literally hear, I can hear trembling going on behind the stage. Come back to that one. Come back to that one right. Oh, there we go. Hang on, what was that? Start again. Oh, start again. Right. This must be the guard room where the snuffle hawks rest. You must collect the notes and leave the room. The discarded finger bones which cover the floor make a loud noise when you walk on them. So you have, you have this voice guiding you at the start of the intro. Run the bones quickly and get to the other side. You can lose a hog there. So she tells you what it is you need to do and you start doing it. So this is the sound you'll hear in terms of where maybe a golden ring is that you need to pick up. And as you move to your left, the sound will come near to you or further away from you. But equally, there's other things going on. So as you're walking, you might be crunching on the bones of dead people, which isn't very good, because then it might uh, alert hogs. <laughs> and they might eat you in a very grisly way. Uh, and that's not the last of our death and destruction uh, in the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Um, so you can see, actually a pretty traditional game, but it's audio only. Um, mm -hmm. How does that look on the screen? This is how it looks on the screen. So you are using your fingers to press left and right. And the only other thing you've got is this dial at the top, uh, which, is your, which is your movement, your 360 movement. So it is a pure audio game. This is, this is all you see. Um, uh, these are the guys who came up with it, and they are radio guys. This is Paul Bennon, he's our Chief Creative Officer. Paul started in radio. He started at Devon Air. Uh, Sadly, no more, I know, but that's, that's where he started. And he's, uh, he's a Sony award-winning producer. He's made programs for the BBC for commercial radio. He presents programs uh, for Radio 3 and Radio 4. Uh, and he came up with this concept. And this is Ben Cave. And Ben was one of our producers. Again, loads of experience in terms of doing shows for the BBC, for commercial radio. And Ben produced all the audio around this and worked with the script writers uh, around creating the storyline that would go with it. Ben is now the head of um, uh, podcasts at iTunes. So an interesting guy to get to know, but you know, these are radio guys who are creating a really successful game. So here's how it looks when you play it. As I said to you, you see what's You're going safe. on. You're safe. A simple movement. When you, um, when you go on Twitter and read about the game, or, or you, know, you look on, on the website and see, what, see the comments that have been made, people often say, turn off the lights, play it in the dark. Um, and you know, that's, that's really interesting because everybody here knows the power of audio and it's interesting bringing that to a wider audience and people really starting to understand that actually the best pictures are the ones that are in the mind and that's what this game plays upon. So it always, it always helps you if, um, if Apple can give you a, a, a helping hand and sure enough uh, we got that with this, uh, uh, it was Game of the Week uh, on the iTunes store here in about 30 odd countries. Interestingly when we went to Apple we said to them uh, well, they said to us, how much are you going to charge for this? And we said, oh, you know, probably £1.50. And they said, you must be joking. Um, a cup of coffee is more expensive than £1.50. Um, this is a premium app. You need to charge more than that. So we charged three ninety nine, which means if you're buying it in the States, you're buying it for $5, which is a, um, you know, um, a, a, a sort of fairly high price on the App Store. I will tell you later how many downloads we got. Maybe you can start trying to think how we did. Lots of great press. It did really well. Uh, we were very excited by that, so that's nice, and it's always nice when you win a few awards as well. And, and um, I know we're in a radio space today, and um, I like winning sodas and things, but, but uh, these, are, these are awards we won for this game, and these are, uh, certainly these two awards are very, very prestigious awards in the games world. So, really interesting that we were then taking those audio skills and applying them in a, in a games environment. Now, here is uh, AMV. This is uh, one of the biggest uh, advertising agencies in the world. Um, they do a lot of work with Jamie Oliver, as you can see. I'm not quite sure why he's standing outdoors admiring a sausage, uh, but he is. Um, and AMV caught wind of the work we've done with Papa Sangre and came to us and said, can we do another game uh, where, we, um, where we work with the brand that they represent? The brand was Wrigley's, it was this. Now, uh, you may have seen this gum, you may not, which is part of the problem. This is the five gum. Um, I know it looks like a condom. It is actually chewing gum. Uh, it sells brilliantly in the US and Europe to sort of 15 to 25 year olds because it's a sort of trendy chewing gum. Uh, it's chewing gum, it still just tastes the same as chewing gum, but there it is. Uh, if you go into news agents here, you will see it on that front counter, you know, literally when you're paying your money, they have those sweet, sweets in front of you for that last minute purchase. Um, but it doesn't sell and it hasn't penetrated. And the challenge here was, or the brand uh, proposition here was that um, 
Uh, the five gums are all about sensory experiences, so you can immediately see the correlation in terms of why Papa Sangre was interesting for them. So back to AMV and to Jamie and his sausage. Um, they came and had a chat with us and said, look, you know, we'd really like to get the game going. And I think for anyone who's worked with advertising agencies, um, you will probably recognise that sometimes, particularly when it comes to radio and audio, they don't understand that world as well. And sometimes it can be very difficult getting strong creative ideas through because they just don't really have an understanding. But that wasn't true of AMV, and they said, we really want to work collaboratively with this. And uh, actually, we will put the might of people we've got in our place to go and get the talent, which is great, because as anyone knows, the most expensive part of most of the things you do when you have major talent is the cost of the talent. So they approached Benedict. He wasn't offered a massive fee, but this was a really interesting project for him to think about, and he was very keen to do that. So we threw around a few ideas. Do we base this game in you know, the, the sewers of London, or is it in, in, in sort of Dracula's castle? And really where we ended up was, no, this is going to be a game in space. And it's called Nightjar, and it came out about uh, three or four months ago. And here is the trailer. The Five Experience presents The Nightjar, featuring the voice of Benedict Cumberbatch. You are on a dying spaceship. The crew abandoned you. Systems failing, everything pitch black. You can't see anything. You have to find your way to safety just by listening. Then your problems really start. second killing of the afternoon. I think there might be one more coming as well. Um, so you can see, same concept, it's set in space, instead of the nice little fairy voice, uh, Benedict is the voice who helps you along. And just like Papa Sangre, produced by a radio person, this is a, a, a fantastic guy for David O'Donnell. Uh, David is currently the producer of Giles Peterson on Radio 1, so you couldn't get you know, more different ends of the sort of audio spectrum. David's background is in radio, he's very interested in interactivity, he worked on other projects with us, and he was the producer of Nightjar in terms of, again, recording all, all the audio, working with the script writers, storylining, and working with Benedict uh, to, to get a finished product. Um, so you remember the, the interface on Pub Sangre uh, with the feet marks? This is the version for Nightjar. Um, there's the left and right, and the top bit is how I turn around. In a way, it's even more simple to understand. You, know, you don't need instructions to play this game, you just need a pair of ears. Uh, here is, uh, here is uh, the sort of thing you see uh, when you start a game, and um, as I said, if you remember the fairy in the, in the first game, in Papa Sangre, Benedict fills that role in this game, so he uh, tells you at the start of each, um, start of each uh, round what it is you need to do, and he's there to help you, or is he, evil laugh? You're going to have to creep between them first, open the airlock door, then launch the life raft to blow them out into space. Can you do that? Yeah, you can. You need to hit two sensors to open the airlock. Come on. Okay, so same concept, different place. Um, it helps if you're working with advertising agency because obviously they can bring a lot of marketing power to it, and that's what they did here. These are um, difficult, maybe, to see here in terms of the text, but these are actually um, they were uh, full-page ads that went in places like Heat magazine, intentionally. Um, very catching visually and very small text-wise because they want you to really zoom in and, and catch, what, catch what it says um, so that you know, you'll obviously be driven to the, um, to the store. Um, and here's, here's a radio ad, and uh, you know, we could have another debate here. Interesting this, um, radio ads that they made for Spotify, money that previously maybe would have gone on radio stations. The Night Jar, featuring the voice of Benedict Cumberbatch. Click on the banner to watch the trailer. Listen, you're on the Night Jar. They've left you behind. I know you're confused, but if you want to live, you have to listen to me and do exactly what I tell you. Attention! The night jar has been boarded. There are two complex life forms aboard this ship, of which one is human. Tell me you're still with me. Download free from the App Store now. I'm so glad there was another death. I wasn't sure. So there we go. That's three, three, three deaths in the space of uh, 16 minutes. That's pretty good. Um, <laughs> Uh, increasingly, our philosophy in terms of creating content, and I do mean in the wider sense, I mean when we're making radio shows as well, when we're making Gardener's Question Time or 606, is about trying to take the content to the audience and also do the job of driving the audience back to the content. And that absolutely means um, really diving into social media in a very strong way. And here's a great example of this, uh, of that with this game. Um, 
Uh, in this scenario, what we did was actually, about two months before the launch of the game, uh, we started creating a whole world on Twitter around the game. There were a lot of people who were sort of following uh, what had been the Twitter feed for Papa Sangre and started picking up on this, and a buzz started uh, going around Twitter in terms of something's going on from the guys who made Papa Sangre. And this, uh, we created a whole series of other spaceships who were all talking to each other, of which, um, of which the Night Jar uh, was, was one. Uh, so, um, let's get on some, some stats to finish off. Uh, oh no, before we do that, I just wanted to, wanted to show you this, because just when you thought you couldn't get a photo of a pack of chewing gum, uh, a game, and an iPhone in one frame, there it is. So congratulations A and V in terms of squeezing that all together. But you can see actually in terms of the branding, uh, how everything's been branded in terms of five. Um, fantastically powerful for the brand. Uh, you know, this is the front page of the App Store, and this is this is Five logo. Obviously, this is absolutely money can't buy stuff for brands. And I think you know when you look at uh, what people at Absolute Radio are doing, they've absolutely understood that it's on the App Store. Everyone sees it, and obviously once you download it, it's on um, a huge amount of iPads and iPhones forever. So really, really powerful, um, fantastic stuff. Here's uh, here's some stats then. So starting with Papa Sangre. Um, it got released in January, as I said, at a premium price. It's done over 50,000 downloads, which in terms of, uh, in terms of apps and games is, is a very healthy number. Uh, and as I said, that was at a premium price. Um, just like the pricing of anything, you start high, and once you feel you've reached your max, you start dropping the price to, to encourage a little trickle on. So it's now at 299. It's still selling about 1,000 a month. So that's the other great thing about apps, obviously, that um, once you get a hit, you do just get that, that revenue coming all the time. Moving on to um, Nightjar, normally with a brand funded app, if you go on the app store, um, so I should say Nightjar was free, so uh, with a brand funded app, you'll normally get a thousand or less, and, and once, you, once you've done it, if you've done an app here, you know that you get the numbers from Apple, and you can pretty much figure out where, where, you know, where you're placed in the top 100, you can therefore pretty much figure out what sort of numbers everyone else is doing. Brand funded apps, less than a thousand. Night just done 120,000 in now, um, over 120,000 in now about 10, 10 weeks. So a really fantastic success as far as AMV are concerned and the audience they were trying to reach. And that's just in the UK, I should, I should add. Um, it's, not, it, it's a little bit apples and oranges, uh, or you know, you know, comparing apples and oranges, but the normal click-through rate for a banner ad is something like this, about half a percent. So half a percent of the people who see it will click through onto that banner ad. Uh, in terms of Nightjar, for that same rate of engagement, you would have had to have needed 50 million pairs of eyes. So it's, it's as a piece of advertising, it's worked fantastically for them. Uh, so where, does, where do we go next in terms of audio and what else can we do with it in the game world? We've, uh, we're one of the people who've just received funding from the TSB, the Technology Strategy Board. If you don't know them, they're a quasi-governmental body. David Cameron's very keen to encourage East London to be Silicon Valley. I'm not quite sure that's going to happen, but we are one of the companies in that um, uh, based around there, around Old Street, and uh, we've received a, a, a grant to develop uh, the engine further. And the next thing, the next thing is this: uh, we call this big field mode. So big field this mode is a huge advance in the current Papa Sangre engine. We can create on. T this is basically. I won't play the whole video, but it is basically the idea that we can then link movement to GPS, and so you can physically move in the real world and you are moving in the game. And we're in the process of developing that at the moment and working with a couple of other brands and other people in terms of uh, how that game will be iterated. But that'll be the next stage of it. So I suppose my sort of final wrap-up message to you is, look, you know, there's a bunch of guys here who are radio guys. Traditionally, we're a radio company, and yet we've taken that knowledge and understanding of audio and put it in a completely different space. Uh, we managed to put Benedict Cumberbatch into space because of that. I think if you think about how your skills can be used, I think there are a whole wealth of areas in which they can be used, particularly in the gaming environment. And think very strongly about the storytelling skills you have, the ability to understand audio and to reach an audience, and how that can then be implied, uh, applied outside of radio and in other places. That's 18 minutes. Thank you very much.